For the first time since 2015, the Arizona Cardinals are in the playoffs. Welcome into the very first of many playoff push presented by SeatGeek and Gila River Resorts and Casinos. We'll have exclusive content all week on azcardinals.com. He's Darren Urban. I'm Danny Sarek. The Cardinals finished as the fifth seed, so they'll be playing the fourth seed, the Los Angeles Rams, on Monday night, 615 for the wild card game. Feels like a little bit of deja vu, Darren. Monday night, prime time, playing the Rams. A lot of monkeys they have to get off their back. Yeah, I mean, clearly, Danny, we're in a situation where the Cardinals have played three primetime games this year. They played Monday night against the Rams. They played Thursday night against the Packers. They played Christmas night against the Colts. None of those games went well. But at the same time, none of those games were on the road. All those games were at home. Cardinals go on the road this uh, week. and. You know, they did win in LA earlier this season, so fingers crossed on that. The Cardinals went 8-1 and one on the road in the regular season. The pros and cons of playing in a divisional opponent work for both the Rams and the Cardinals. What are the benefits for this Cardinals team playing a team they're familiar with? Well, I mean, they, they do know who they're playing. And, and I will say out of those two games, Danny, I mean, they, they really dominated the Rams the first time around. And the second game, Cardinals didn't play as well, but they were still uh, within a score at the end of the game and had a potential chance to tie however little chance there was. So, uh, you know, I, I do think that they feel like we can match up in a good way. I mean, the, the problem the Cardinals have at this point for me is the fact that when they did dominate the Rams, they were at complete full strength. Uh, and they're not quite there right now, and they weren't going to be there uh, with DeAndre Hopkins out forgetting all the other injuries. So. Um, I, I do kind of wonder kind of where the offense is going to come from. Uh, they de do need to have more consistency. We saw them against Seattle uh, have some moments of clarity in terms of offense, but there's just too many hiccups right now uh, that they need to overcome and they need to figure that out really fast. This offense is not full strength. They entered their final game of the regular season against the Seahawks with some key players out and then suffered a few more injuries in that game. What updates can you give us? Well, unfortunately, we don't have any true updates and knowing Cliff Kingsbury, we're never going to have any true updates until we actually get to game day. But, uh, you know, James Conner suffered a rib in injury and it, it really put into perspective how important he is. He played a fantastic game against the Seahawks. He was one of the reasons they were in that game. Then he gets hurt, and now you're starting to wonder where you are with that. Um, Chase Edmonds was already missing uh, because of a ribs injury of his own and a toe injury. We'll kind of see how he plays out. I think both those guys play in this game. How healthy they're going to be is, is hard to tell. And they need some cornerbacks. Marco Wilson was missing. They lost Kevin Peterson uh, because of a concussion. Rashad Breeland is probably going to get his first chance to play, but that's another concern with it, as well as the Rams pass the ball. What are you going to have in the secondary? Darren, you didn't mention defensive lineman J.J. Watt. That's the big name to watch. J.J. Watt is, is going to be fascinating to see, and I don't know if we're going to have a good picture of where he is going into that game. I think the Cardinals are going to do everything they can to make that as big of a mystery as they can. Uh, even more so than any other injuries, but will I be shocked to see J.J. Watt on the field Monday night against the Rams? I will not be. J.J. Watt, who was on IR with a shoulder injury, has been designated to return so he can practice and be added to the active roster within 21 days. Looking at this Cardinals team, where do they need to make the most significant adjustments? Well, I mean, to me, again, you're going to need the consistency on offense and you got to score in the red zone. They had, uh, on Sunday, drives of 14, 14, and 19 plays and got field goals out of them. They've got to find a way to put the ball in the end zone because three points isn't enough for, uh, with seven. And then on the other side of the ball, you can't give up 190 yards rushing to one uh, player like they gave up to Rashad Penny. The Rams can throw the ball really well, but if you can slow down their rushing attack, you're in a much better place. A lot to look out for ahead of this Rams Cardinals matchup, and we'll have you set all week on azcardinals.com. So stay locked in on our website. He's Darren Urban. I'm Danny Sarak. Welcome into another edition of Playoff Push presented by SeatGeek and Gila River Resorts and Casinos. In this episode, we're going to be talking about red zone efficiency and cornerback depth for the Arizona Cardinals ahead of their wild card matchup Monday night from SoFi Stadium against the Los Angeles Rams. I'm with Cardinals insider Mike Jarecki. I'm Danny Sarak. Mike, when you look at the overall efficiency of the red zone from the Cardinals all season, 60% success rate, so not bad. However, when you look at the last three games and how they were trending, that number drops to 44%. 
How can the Cardinals be more efficient in the red zone in the playoffs? Well, if they can get Chase Edmonds and James Conner back, that's a great one-two punch. We know Conner's been the, the short yardage guy, and you know it all really starts with the offensive line. But this team has been in the red zone a lot, and they're settling for field goals. And you're not going to beat the Rams settling for field goals. So, uh, a, it's with the offensive line getting the push, and then B utilizing your running backs. Chase Edmonds had 120 yards in the first game. The Cardinals ran the ball 40 times in that game. I'm not saying you got to run it 40 times, but you have to have balance on offense, but you have to be able to score touchdowns in the red zone against the Rams. In the first half of the season, the Cardinals relied on wide receiver DeAndre Hopkins in the red zone. In the 10 games he played, he had eight touchdowns within the 20. However, he's been hurt with a knee injury, so he's still on IR. The Cardinals aren't sure. Maybe he'll be ready for the playoffs, but the Cardinals have still played seven of their last nine games without Hopkins so that can't be an excuse anymore as to why you're not scoring in the red zone. No but he is a presence on the field. You're not seeing the receivers get the same separation and there's been some miscommunication and you know besides you know AJ Green and Ertz and Christian uh, Kirk they need Rondell Moore back. They need some of their playmakers back but you know Hop had eight touchdowns as you said in the red zone and seven of those came basically within the five to 10 yard line. So they miss his presence on the field. So the receivers got to get off separation and then they got to protect Kyler Murray because we're not seeing any chunk plays in this offense. Last week, only two plays over 20 yards. The Seahawks had nine. They need bigger plays and that starts with a running game where the play action opens up. Whereas the Cardinals might have been trending downwards their last three games in the red zone, the Rams complete opposite, up to 62% their efficiency within the 20, a large part due to wide receiver Cooper Cup, who has just completed the elusive triple crown, the first wide receiver to do so since Steve Smith in 2005. Cup finished the regular season leading the league in receptions, receiving yards, and receiving touchdowns. The first time these teams met in the regular season, the Cardinals defense shut him down. He had a season low 64 yards, zero touchdowns. How can this Cardinals secondary take him out of the passing game again? Well, they beat him up. They hit him hard in that game and he wasn't able to, you know, yards after catch, but he's a weapon. Clearly he's, you know, Matthew Stafford has worked with him in the off season, so you can see they're on the same page, but the Cardinals were physical at that time. And a lot of times they want to play man-to-man -man press at the line of scrimmage. Maybe they'll play him a little bit more zone, but I remember him getting hit on the five yard line and he wasn't the same player after that. He was targeted double digits and only had five catches. So. Um, again, he's a weapon. You're not going to shut everyone down, but that's going to be where the Cardinals secondary comes in. But the secondary will look different this time around because the Cardinals won't have some of those same players now. That is correct. Now, hopefully, you know, when you look at Marco Wilson returning and then Antonio Hamilton and, and we'll see about Kevin Peterson. Br Rashad Burleyland has experience though. You know, he was in Minnesota. The Cardinals got a chance to play against him. He's got, you know, good size, got NFL experience. And when you look at it, according to Vance Joseph last week, he was on the practice field for a few days and they liked his football IQ. But he also has to play on special teams. But I think when you look at the top four, Breland could be that guy behind Peterson, uh, Marco Wilson and Murphy. And then we'll see about Antonio Hamilton. The Cardinals signed Breland just after the new year. However, he has not been active on the 53 man roster yet. However, with some of these injuries, this might be a good game to put him on that list. We will have more playoff push content all week long on azcardinals.com Red Sea. So we've got you covered. He's Mike Jarecki. I'm Danny Sreck. We'll see you all week long on azcardinals.com. Welcome into Playoff Push, presented by SeatGeek and Gila River Resorts and Casinos. I'm Danny Sarak, and in this episode, we're going to be talking about quarterbacks ahead of this Cardinals Rams wild card matchup. There's no one better to join me than former Cardinals quarterback Drew Stan. Drew, you not only know Cardinals quarterback Kyler Murray so well from watching him this year, you also know Rams quarterback Matthew Stafford from the time you guys were teammates in Detroit. So you're the perfect person to join us on this episode. We're going to talk about the two regular season matchups between these two teams. Both times it was the road team that got the win. So let's start in week four. Cardinals are in LA. They dominate and win the game in large part because of how well Kyler Murray played. How did he control that game? Well, I think he was able to lean on the run game. You look at what they were able to do and 216 yards on the ground. It's pretty remarkable. Anytime you can do that and be balanced, throw for over 200 yards. He kept his numbers, his attempts were right around 30. He went in there, he did everything he needed to do that week, uh, had a tremendous touchdown pass to AJ Green to force the issue. Uh, you really, that's what you're looking for. Um, Chase Edmonds had over 100 yards on the ground. There was so much balance that he could go out and play his game. Another uh, number that, that really stood out was no sacks. 
that's something that he wasn't able to do in the, in the next game where it kind of flipped. And you look at Matthew in that first game and he struggled to get into a rhythm. He wasn't able to connect with Cooper Cup. He had 13 attempts to Cooper Cup alone and only five catches. Uh, so you look at these numbers, you see the turnover that Matthew had, the interception he had, and, and you fast forward to what happens uh, later on and then it's a tale of two different games. Right, it was a completely different game in that second matchup. That time at State Farm Stadium, Cardinals offense already looked a little different. They didn't have wide receiver DeAndre Hopkins with his knee injury, and they also didn't have running back Chase Edmonds, who was dealing with an ankle injury at the time. That game, Matthew Stafford controlled it a little better than Kyler Murray did. What improvements did you see from Stafford in that second time around? Well, I think just the comfort level. His interception that he had uh, in the previous game was the Deshaun Jackson, who was no longer with the team. Part of that's communication, feel, all of those things. He started hitting some of those home runs, quote unquote, with that. With Van Jefferson, he was able to do that. They got the run game going, four yards on average with uh, Sony Michelle. And Kyler had way too many pass attempts. Anytime that they can't get the run game going, Kyler was the leading rusher. Those are recipes for disaster in the playoffs because everything's going to come down to three or four plays that are made throughout the course of that game. And if you look at the plays that were made in the first game versus the second game, there was they were taking turns on which teams did that. So, you know, Matthew played a very clean game. He had three touchdown passes. He was very efficient. Cooper Cup went off. So there's going to be a lot of answers that you need to be able to fix. And unfortunately, the Cardinals don't have much time to do it because they don't have those pieces of the puzzle that you were talking about. They don't have DeAndre Hopkins back. There's going to be question marks with Chase Edmonds, with James Conner's ribs, all of these things. But really, Kyler has the ability to put this team on his back. He has the ability, because he's an MVP caliber type of a player, to be able to go out and win a playoff game. That's why you have him. And I think this team, this team that the Arizona Cardinals have is more better suited now to go into a, this type of an atmosphere on the playoffs, on the road with so much on the line because the Los Angeles Rams, as good as they are, as talented as they are, there's a lot of different pieces that don't really fit to the puzzle. They tried to add Odell Beckham. They tried to add Vaughn Miller. All of these guys are great players in their own right, but how they fit in, how they mesh, that, that takes time. And Steve Kime did a great job of going out and getting Zach Ertz and filling that void for Max Williams, of getting different guys, getting Rodney Hudson back. So, you know, it, it's an intriguing matchup because these guys know each other really well. You don't have to look at the scouting report. You don't have to look at any of these things. They haven't played it, you know, Know, that far from removed from playing each other and it's going to come down to which quarterback plays the best which is what playoff football is all about. Cardinals hit the road where they're 8-1 and one in the regular season so hopefully that bodes well in their favor as well. Red Sea we will continue to have more playoff push content all week long on azcardinals.com. He's Drew Stanton. I'm Danny Sarek. Thanks so much for tuning in. Welcome into another edition of Playoff Push presented by SeatGeek and Gila River Resorts and Casinos. In this episode, we're going to be talking about the coaches ahead of this Cardinals Rams wildcard matchup Monday night at 615 from SoFi Stadium. He's Craig Grealu. I'm Danny Sarek. Cliff Kingsbury is in his third year as the Cardinals head coach. First time he's made the playoffs. Sean McVay with the Rams. This is his fifth year as the head coach. Fourth time making the playoffs. The two of these coaches are offensive minded. In that first meeting between these teams in week four, the Cardinals dominated in their 37-20 win. How did Kingsbury call a successful game that time? The big key was make sure you get off to a good start, get a lead and maintain that lead because the Cardinals ran, Danny, a season high 40 rushing attempts in that ball game. So I think if the Cardinals are able to stay somewhat balanced, and I know both coaches want to throw the football, throw the football a lot. But I think Kingsbury has learned, especially this season specifically, that the best way for this team to have success, win ball games, is to be balanced and rely and stick with that run game, which he was able to do back in week four. Not so much that second time around. And that second time around, though, a large part of that was because running back Chase Edmonds was out with an ankle injury. By that point, the Cardinals were also without wide receiver DeAndre Hopkins, so the offense already looked a little different. That second matchup, it was a bit of a change from that first time. It was the Rams who dominated. How did the Rams, how did Sean McVay and his coaching staff exploit the Cardinals that time? Well, that first meeting, Cooper Cup was held to a season low 64 receiving yards. He was still targeted a ton. Second meeting, a targeted a ton as well, but this time there was a connection between Stafford and Cooper Cup. And the big thing, the big adjustment, both those uh, the, the most of those targets and the explosive plays, which has been given this defense for the Cardinals issues recently, a lot of those explosive plays came on first down. They got off real quickly as far as the Rams trying to get 
to that Cardinals defense in a hurry. So three explosive plays, three pass plays of 40 or more yards, excuse me, but it was on first down in which McVay said, you know what, I'm not going to wait. Let's do it right now. And I think it might have caught the Cardinals defensively off guard a little bit. McVay is 45 and one all time when leading at half and that one loss comes in the Rams most recent game their overtime loss to the San Francisco 49ers. So this shows that not only is McVay getting his team off to a hot start, they're making the right halftime adjustments to keep that lead. How can Kingsbury lead the Cardinals to a hot start Monday night? Well, let's see if the defense can't do what it did in that first meeting, get some takeaways and then the offense can capitalize on that. It's that complimentary football we've, which we've heard all season long. So that would be the key to where you don't have to worry about that stat. Or maybe if you are trailing, it's only by one possession and all of a sudden that stat becomes 45 and two after Monday night. I love the optimism. Cliff Kingsbury and Sean McVay are friends and they don't necessarily talk a ton maybe during the season since they coach in the same division, but it's interesting because their personalities are a little bit different, at least what we see yep. in the media. Sean McVay was seen running into the end zone in the Rams last game, celebrating after a touchdown. We've seen the videos where he has to have a member of his staff pull him back by the waist off the field, back onto the sideline. We don't necessarily see that with Cliff Kingsbury. What did Cliff had to say this week about his relationship with Sean though? Well, one, they're very good friends and Kingsbury credits McVay for even Kingsbury being in this position in the National Football League because for a split second there Kingsbury was going to be working for McVay in Los Angeles. He still worked in Los Angeles, but it was with USC for a short time before the Cardinals came calling. But it is a relationship that Kingsbury relies on, maybe not so much this week, but has used McVay as a sounding board to help him here in his first three seasons in the NFL. So they're frenemies this week, friend enemies. Exactly. <laughs> Rams and Cardinals kick off Monday 615 Mountain Standard Time from SoFi Stadium in that wild card matchup. We'll have more playoff push content all week long on azcardinals.com. For Craig Grealou, I'm Danny Sarek. Thanks so much for tuning in to Playoff Push. Welcome into Playoff Push presented by SeatGeek and Gila River Resorts and Casinos. I'm Danny Sarak and I'm joined by defensive lineman JJ Watt. JJ, this is the first time the Cardinals have been in the playoffs in six years. However, you personally have a multitude of experience in the playoffs with that. When you look at this Cardinals team, what does this team have as its ace in the pocket? I mean, we're a very good team and we play to our full potential. And I think that we showed that in many different instances this year, obviously in the beginning of the year with an extremely hot start. Um, and some of the games along the way. I think that when we're all on the field together and playing at the best of our abilities, and there's so many different ways that we can attack, which is great. I mean, obviously you have Kyler, you have James, you have Chase, you have AJ, you have Zach. You have so many different ways the offense can attack you. And then on defense, there's guys at every single level of defense that are, are great players. So it's a lot of fun to play in a team like this. You split regular season series with the Rams. In week four, you handled them in their house, forced two turnovers, forced quarterback Matthew Stafford to throw it 41 times. However, the second meeting in Arizona was a bit of a different story. What is one aspect of this defense that has to be sharpened this third time around? It's just aggression. Uh, you got to play with aggression. You got to play with confidence. You got to play with an edge. And I think that that's the key to our team's success. You know, when we when we're rolling, when we're doing what we're supposed to do, we're playing extremely confident. Any adversity that comes our way doesn't matter. We overcome it because we're so confident in ourselves. And I think that that's, that's the type of game that we have to play and that's the type of team that we have to be, is that no matter what happens, no matter how things go, we're gonna overcome it and we believe in ourselves. When you look at how this team played all season, it doesn't matter how you get to the playoffs, as long as you get there and finished 11 and six, however, went one and four in their last five. What does a clean slate do for this team mentally to allow them to play to their true identity? Yeah, I mean, once you're in, it's a whole new ball game. I mean, it's you got to get to the tournament to win the tournament. So we're in it. It's a brand new slate. Nothing now matters what happened in the past. And it's all about what you do on Monday night and, uh, and beyond. So just looking forward to the opportunity. There are only three current Cardinals players who were with the team in that last playoff run six years ago. You have been described as the ultimate leader by your teammates, not only leading by example on the field, but also in the locker room. What's been your message to these teammates on how to seize this opportunity on primetime Monday night when the stakes are magnified in the playoffs? I've told them two things. I said, control what you can control. I mean, there's no reason to worry about anything that you can't control, but as long as you do what you do to the best of your ability, we're gonna be extremely successful. 
Don't try and worry about things outside of your control. And then the second thing I told him was believe. You gotta believe, you gotta, you gotta speak in definitives. I want you to speak in we will, we are going to, not we hope, not we want to. So those two things, and if we go out here and we handle our business and we do what we're supposed to do, I think we're gonna have a lot of fun. You talk about belief. You've talked about how you had to believe in yourself as of late. You injured your shoulder in October. You said when it was dislocated, it took everything with it. You had surgery in early November and have now cut that expected recovery time in half with a chance to make your return for the playoffs Monday night. What can you tell the fans about your availability Monday night, JJ? We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. I'm, I'm just doing the best I can do on a daily basis and trying to be the best player I can be and the best teammate I can be. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see if JJ makes his return Monday night in LA. Cardinals and Rams in the wild card matchup. For JJ Watt, I'm Danny Serac.